Hey guys, what's up? So today we have quite an interesting guitar for you guys. This is a 1981 Gibson 335S. Notice there's no ES in the title. That's because this guitar is a solid body version of the famous ES-335. Or at least it's named so. It, there are quite a few differences between this and ES-335, as we'll see soon. So, let's talk about this guitar real quick. So this was made in the Norlin era of Gibson. Um, you can either love their guitars or hate them for their experimentation and their wacky designs. I personally love them. I think it's refreshing. And there are quite a few hidden gems in that collection. Whereas there are some doozies, you know, I'd say like the Sonics and <laughs> some of the S1s and Marauders are a bit kind of not up to par with the rest of the Gibson lineup of the time. But anyways, this is an exception. I think this is definitely, this definitely holds up even today. This is 1981. They made these for two years around 1980 to 82. They're, this is the most desirable of the lineup. This is the Professional Deluxe in the rarest color Silver Burst. Now they also made these in the Firebrand style which was pretty much bare wood with a light satin finish. Very great players, great guitars. However, my opinion, if you're going to play one of those for long enough, it's going to just scratch the absolute heck out of it. <laughs> like, and because of that, weirdly, if you could find a clean model that's not been scratched up, it's actually all, worth basically the same as this, which is ironic. Um, but anyways, this guitar itself is in pretty great condition. Not perfect, you know, it's got some battle scars, but overall, the integrity of this instrument is still very great, still in incredible condition. You, you wouldn't be able to tell that this is a 40-year-old guitar. The 335S is equipped with a mahogany body, mahogany neck, an ebony fretboard is one of my favorite parts, and Gibson dirty finger humbuckers. Now, all those things together make this for an incredibly high-end feeling instrument in what was con is considered kind of like a budget Gibson. The humbuckers are great. They're coil splittable, which is also really interesting. So you can go from sounding something like this. to this. You've got the typical Gibson style controls, you know, two volume, two tone, uh, rhythm, middle, neck, uh, treble pickup. You've got a brass nut, which is something that I haven't really seen on any other Gibsons. And you've got the Norlin era Gibson tuners, which I think are actually really great. Um, nice binding on the neck. Overall, I think this is a great guitar for the money, and I don't know why it's it's a bit of a sleeper model, I'd honestly say. Um, however, prices are starting to creep up on these because they are very limited in numbers and they are kind of hard to find. Yeah, so let's just uh, let's just play this guy a little bit and see what we hear.
So now that we've heard how this thing sounds, I just want to talk about the tone and the feel of this instrument. Now, let's just start with the feel. Um, the finish is nice. It's a nitro finish. Some of these models are prone to a bit of an orange peel effect with age. This one, not so much. It's not as smooth as, say, the finish on my 70s Les Paul Deluxe, but it's definitely really nice, really smooth. Um, and it's not really checking too much. It's just a tiny bit, like, here and here. The neck itself, it's hard to explain. I feel it's just like a, a medium Gibson neck. It's middle of the road to me, whereas it's not as slim as my 70s Les Paul Deluxe, but it's definitely got some chunk to it. It's not quite that of my 90s Les Paul Studio or my 60s Epiphone Olympic, which has like a junior baseball bat, but with the wider nut width it kind of feels a little bit bigger than it is I guess um, this might be because it's modeled after the 335 the ES335 a bit and I feel like those have a slightly wider nut width than say your SG um, the weight of this guitar is actually like really interesting it's about eight and a half pounds which I think is perfect like it's not light by any means but it's definitely not heavy you could sling this thing around for an hour and not really you know be holding your shoulder or your back. It really is like the perfect in between of an, a Les Paul and an SG, in my opinion. Because you've got a lot of like the beefy feel and attributes of a Les Paul with some of the more comfort related aspects of the SG, which is like the arm contour, the just a slimmer body with nice just curves. It's like, it's pretty sexy if you ask me. <laughs> And yeah, you have a nice cutaway up here for access to the high frets. And yeah, just, oh, and it's actually balanced too, which is great. That's why I don't like SGs only for that reason. I would otherwise play an SG, um, but I just hate neck dive because I'm always playing standing up and I just, I can't deal with it. It just ruins the experience for me. Um, so yeah, this is great. This one doesn't have the stock TP6 tailpiece. However, I ordered one to restore it to stock. But I honestly think this is better for this guitar if, if you ever have one and, and intend to play it for a good amount of time. I'd honestly just recommend getting a basic, you know, stop bar and switching that out for the TP6. Keep the TP6, don't throw it anywhere unless you want to sell it and make like 200 bucks. Um, but I'm, I'm just getting it so I have the option to restore it to stock if I need to, if I want to sell it. But as far as like playing it goes, this is a good setup for me. The tone of these humbuckers, now they're quite interesting. I thought the Gibson Dirty Fingers would be quite high output, which they sound quite high output, but they're actually, they don't read too hot. They read about 8K in each position, give or take, which was surprising to me because it still sounds like louder than my Les Paul Deluxe, which the mini humbuckers are, the bridge position at least, is about 9K. So. Really interesting. Um, definitely has a nice bright attack to it because of the ebony fretboard, which I really like. And that complements the coil splitting quite well because what I find with typical Gibsons that have say a rosewood fretboard and they're trying to coil split it, it doesn't really sound like the, t the, the trademarked Fender clean single coil sound. It's not really gonna do that because the rosewood is a bit more of a warm and less snappy uh, kind of fretboard wood, whereas the ebony has a lot more traits similar to maple that you'd find on like a Strat or a Tele in terms of you know getting into that ballpark of the single coil sound. So this, in my opinion, does single coil sounds better than t a typical Gibson, surprisingly. Like if you just hear this kind of like a twang, you know? If you were to record that, you wouldn't really be able to tell that it's not like a Fender. Like maybe you'd hear slight differences, but it does that sound pretty damn well. And of course, it does the Gibson big raw humbucker sound perfectly, like no doubt about it. So some pros and cons with this guitar. I'd honestly say one of the biggest cons right now is the price. These guys are actually going up in value. Um, you, they're roughly 25 to 2600 Canadian, which is somewhere around 2000 US which is a lot 
um, you could buy like a, a Les Paul standard for that price. You could buy some e like you know e played in ES three thirty fives for that price. You can buy a, a good SG standard for that price. Um, and so then it comes down to like, are you looking for like a vintage guitar because of like the character, the vibe, the feel, or do you want just like an o overall good playing guitar? Um, for that price, like personally, I have a knack and a, an addiction to vintage guitars. I just love how they feel and how they play, and the character that you get from that. But that's not everybody's case. And if you're just looking for a general good guitar, you could probably get away with like a just a Les Paul standard um, for that price and it'll it'll do you just as well in some in some ways better because say the frets on these guys are a little bit low typically because in you know 70s 80s early 80s like in the Norlin era they they're call, called the fretless wonders so they already didn't have much fret material to begin with and then as they get played they wear down even further so now I have the I've got a setup so it doesn't buzz but if I wanted to level the frets a little bit you get into a bit of a risky zone where there's not much fret left and to refret a guitar with these fret, fret nibs is just, that's a no-no. You want to avoid that at all costs if possible. There's a great character, feel, vibe, sound to this that you can't really get with new guitars. Even with the reissued version of these, which honestly I haven't heard good things about them because Gibson's just been doing lots of cost cutting measures and their finishes are just so lame in my opinion these days, like the satin finish. They scratch immediately, they don't hold condition well, and they don't look that good, they look cheap to me. Um, they Apparently the new ones weigh like two pounds more, which is ridiculous, because then it makes it way less playable. Um, doesn't have the original Dirty Fingers humbuckers, I don't think it has coil splitting, and do also definitely doesn't have the ebony fretboard. So too many cost cutting measures and the reissues. So if you're gonna get a 335S because you love that model, Definitely look for one of the older ones. It's, you're not going to be happy with the reissues. So yeah, my final thoughts would be if you can find one of these for a reasonable price and it's in good condition so that it holds its value, there's been no major repairs, no huge cracks or damage to this thing, it's definitely worth the buy. You get a vintage guitar with a lot of character, a lot of feel, and that sounds really good for you know a modest mid-level Gibson price. So yeah, thank you for watching. I've been Simon. You can check out my channel for more videos. I have a few other vintage guitar reviews on there. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next time. Peace.